Hey everybody, time for another video. So, I, uh, from now and then I get uh, customers asking me the differences between the bird meters and the types of connectors, what connectors they should use for each type of line section, so I um, figure I'd shoot a video. I also get a lot of questions about peak reading meters and RMS versus peak and uh, they hearing one thing on pal talk or youtube or wherever it may be so um i figured i i should make this video so here we go okay so um i laid out some stuff here on my my workbench uh after this i have another box to go through so i figured i'd do this uh real quick before i get to work on the next project um as you can see, you have uh, the line sections in the middle, you have some flange connectors and adapters, some elements, uh, a couple bird meter, oh, there's a, a standard bird 43, there's a 30 microamp uh, meter movement that I use with the bird 30 microamp line sections, and then there's a 100 microamp uh, meter movement. Okay, so basically you have uh, two different types of line sections. Uh, you have the the smaller type, which is 7 eighths, which is this right here. This is a dual element, okay? Here's a single element, 7 eighths. These are, um, these require the QC type connector, which is this right here. See the small little pin? These are 30 microamp. They require a 30 microamp slug. These are 100 microamp line sections. This is a unflanged inch and five eighths. It's actually a three element slug line section right here, as you can see. And here's a, this is made by Coaxial Dynamics. This is a bird dual element 100 microamp line section, flanged. I have some of those available for sale. I have a whole bunch of those available, which is a 3 and one eighth unflanged line section, single element bird, 100 microamp slug. So, a line section like this that doesn't have any flanges, you can install the flanges. They slip on, they're slipping on, then you put a clamp around it. Same goes for the 3 and one eighth. You can slip this on. So I see a lot of people using adapters, crazy adapters with line sections. So someone will have like an uh, inch and five eighths and they adapt it down with some crazy connector down to this bird adapter. So basically this is a, this is the proper connector for L40, for um, LDF7-50. This is an L47R. I have a whole bunch of these brand new, never used. Um, so basically they're taking inch and five eighths, adapting it down, see, inch and five eighths, to um, the bird QC. So you're going from, uh, this is the center pin, this is the proper center pin that goes in to the L47R. I've seen people use, they'll, they'll stuff the bullet in. This actually goes into the center conductor of the L47R, but that's a whole other video at some point. And then the bullet slides into that. So, um, that's just ridiculous. I mean, to take a connector that should be that big, a connection, and go down to go down to a QC type pin like that, what's the point? <laughs> um, might as well just run the smaller uh, connectors. <laughs> There's no point. Might as, well, might as well run the smaller coax too. Um, I also have, this is a um, L45 R. This goes on 7 8 LDF 5 50 7 8 um, Once again, um, Here's the uh, proper center connection right here. Then 
loads of these also if anyone's looking for one. Um, I have new ones and used ones. And you can adapt that to this. So, okay, so back to the bird meters. Um, I see a lot of people using peak reading meters on their videos. Um, I, I, I tell customers running uh, AM to tune their uh, amplifier to maximum output. Yes, you can use a peak meter for that, or you can just um, tune it for max output, max forward output um, uh, with an average scale, or um, by putting audio into the microphone, or you can throw a big carrier, tune it, and then you can drop the carrier back down. Uh, peak A peak meter can uh, be deceptive, can be deceiving, because uh, you know, your peak meter will almost always go forward and you can have your carrier up too high and your average uh, output can go backwards. Uh, and, um, you know, but your, if you have a peak uh, meter engaged, it'll keep showing forward output. Uh, when I run a amplifier on ham, I, if I'm running AM uh, amplitude modulation, I'm uh, I set my carrier to one quarter of my total output. Um, uh, you know, people like to uh, cover up the fact that the amplifier is going backwards, and uh, you know, on the average scale, and they they uh, leave out a plate current meter, uh, so you don't see it's uh, drawing less current as you talk. But um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So uh, I hardly ever use that Bird Forty Three. It's you know, if I'm tuning a radio or something, or if I have to go uh, on a job somewhere uh, on site, you know, off site to a, a remote location, then I'll, I'll bring it with me. But um, generally, I'll, I'll use one of these, which does not have a peak meter kit in it. And that one does not have a peak meter kit in it. So these are the actual pickup connections for the line sections for the bird line sections. They connect the DC, these connections right here, um, between, um, uh, they connect this to the actual uh, meter movement. So, um, that's about it. Uh, so, if uh, you're looking for a line section, this will give you an idea of uh, what connectors you need, the proper connector, and um, what to expect. Uh, it's really not rocket science. Once you know what you need, it's uh, easy to find it. Uh, so, just uh, that's basically it. So, thanks for watching, and I'll make another video on some connectors, uh, giving you a comparison of one versus another, and show you what kind of stock I have here. If anyone's looking for connectors, um, also another thing to look out for. Uh, People like to tamper with slugs. Uh, I always recommend that you buy your own slug uh, directly from a um, retailer. Like uh, I'm not going to name any, but there are some available. There are some that are on eBay and other places um, that sell them for good, you know, deep, for decent prices. So it's best to get your own slug. Um, and not one that has been in the hands of someone else because some people like to open the slugs up and they alter the slug so you'll end up seeing uh, a false reading on your meter. Also, another thing about using a peak meter, if your radio is producing all sorts of harmonics and your amplifier um, is uh, not built properly, it can end up amplifying those harmonics if it doesn't suppress those harmonics, you can end up seeing a lot of fake power on your your uh, peak meter. Um, so, just another reason why I don't, I, I just, I, I just see it all the time. People make a video with a peak meter and, and it's just, uh, you know, it's good to know what you're doing for peak output, but if you know the amplifier, if you built it, or if you know the specs, if you know what it'll do, there's really no reason to monitor your peak output. Um, you know, key one quarter, I like, like I said, one quarter for 100% modulation, and you're good to go. So, thanks for watching. That's, that's it. Hi, everybody. Um, I figured I'd add this to my meter video. These are my favorite meters. These are what are called bird watcher meters. Top meters for 100 microamp, 
line sections, bottom meters for 30 microamp line sections. They have a built-in protection feature. See that red line? That's adjustable on each meter. That's the reflect, that's the reverse um, uh, that connects to the uh, slug that's being used to monitor reverse power to the standing wave ratio um, uh, between um, the line section and the load. So um, if that line is met, um, an alarm will go off and uh, the key line is actually wired in series with the meter and it opens the key line which um, basically unkeys the amplifier and will, will help protect it. Um, you know, the you can also have a protection circuit built into the amplifier, but it's also nice to um, you know have that extra uh, measure of protection here. So uh, these are great meters; they're awesome to have. You know, they're kind of they can be hard to find, but um, and they can be expensive, but they're well worth it. Uh, definitely worth uh, the extra money. So I recommend uh, the people buy these, especially if you're not. Uh, uh, near the amplifier, if you have the amplifier off-site, or um, you know, if you're, um, you know, it's not near use, you can't hear it. Like I said, so um, definitely a good thing to have. Thanks for watching.